It would be a complete and total understatement to say that 2017 was a good year for music, particularly metal music. Last year was filled with anticipation for albums that were already announced in 2016, and we even experienced a few sudden surprise releases here and there. Not to mention the fact that with the sudden and exponential growth that the metal reaction community has seen this year, only introduced many metalheads, including myself, to a variety of bands that would have gone mostly unheard of. While there were some disappointing releases and teehees from time to time, I can honestly say that in comparison to 2016, this year was a far better year for the genre when it comes to the quantity and the quality of releases. Now, before I get into my picks for the 10 best metal albums of the year, I would just like to remind everyone that, just like with last year, these albums aren't numbered according to rank, since I love all 10 of these albums and their honourable mentions equally. Also, this list is completely subjective and is according to my taste. If your favourite album isn't seen here on the list, then feel free to leave your top 10 albums in the comments below. Now, without further delay, let us dive into what I believe are the top 10 best metal albums of 2017. Number 1. Legends of the Shires by Threshold Let me just say that out of every album released this year, this one was the one that I was happiest to discover. Since discovering Devin Townsend sometime last year, I've been checking out a lot of prog metal bands since then, starting with Opeth, then moving on to Gojira, and even giving Dream Theater Bash. Also, my friend and fellow YouTuber, Michelle TL, actually it convinced me to revisit Tool again, and I can gladly say that I am now a fan. However, despite this band being around since the 1980s, I've never heard anyone mention them or bring them up in conversation. I must admit the thing that drew me to check out this album was actually the stunning album art. And the first single I checked out on YouTube was Stars and Satellites, and there was something nostalgic about their sound that reminded me a lot of not just old school heavy metal, but classic rock as well. And that just hooked me from the first note. And don't get me started on the heavenly chorus. I was absolutely sold on these guys and I knew I had to listen to the whole album and I am so glad that I did. Usually prog albums as long as this one can lose steam and even be daunting for the average listener, but unlike Dream Theater's The Astonishing, this album manages to consistently keep your attention and manages to keep surprising you at each and every single turn. While this isn't the heaviest release, it is definitely the most ambitious and most memorable and it just keeps keeps on getting better and better with each listen. Everything from the composition, arrangements, songwriting and production is top notch and the vocals really balance out between rock and metal styles and are literally some of the smoothest vocals I've ever heard in the genre. I highly recommend that every metalhead, even those who prefer the more extreme side of metal, check out this album. And if you ever want to introduce somebody to the world of metal music, this is one of those albums. It is definitely worth every minute of your time. And if I ran some kind of award ceremony, this album would most likely win first prize. If you're curious about this album and want to check it out, I suggest this to the track Small Dark Lines and Stars and Satellites, and if that doesn't convince you, then I don't know what will. Number 2. Dance and Laugh Amongst the Rock by Krach Angren Has there ever been a piece of music that while you do love it and listen to it quite a lot, it still manages to give you that slight sense of fear and paranoia that you would feel after being told a scary story as a kid? or after you've watched a good horror movie? If so, then Karach Angren is definitely a band that has that kind of effect. I decided to check out this band after they were uh, recommended to me on Last FM while reading up on Demu Borger. And while black metal as a whole can give that same feeling I described earlier based on its visuals alone, most bands in the genre don't have the ability to really make you not only enjoy and appreciate their music and the genre as a whole. This is where Karach Angren a symphonic black metal band from the Netherlands comes in. While most symphonic black metal bands try to imitate the big names of the style like Dimmu Borger, Cradle of Filth and Dark Funeral, this is the first band 
that I have heard that not only sound unique, but cover subject matter that still manages to play with our fears and superstitions about the world and the things we still don't understand. Black metal bands usually have lyrics that cover and promote anti-Christian messages and are either satanic or pagan. But Karach Angren have consistently put out concept albums that cover either real ghost stories from Dutch folklore, or they do original concepts with a supernatural edge based on things like war or the Ouija board and the spirits trapped within it, which is what this particular album is all about. But it's not just the subject matter that Karach Angren cover that gives you this feeling. No, the real key lies in the songwriting and the vocalist Sergor's lyricism and narration style of singing that blends itself well with the instrumentals. This album and all their albums in general is like experiencing a horror movie or horror audiobook in music form. The songs are completely unpredictable and unnatural in structure and Sergor not only delivers on the traditional black metal style vocals but he even when necessary moans like a corpse that has been raised from the grave, whispers like an otherworldly spectre, laughs like a deranged monster and even uses his breathing to imitate the sound of an unspeakable horror chasing down its prey through the darkest of forests. A lot of people who dislike this band criticize them for their lyricism as it's not as poetic or metaphorical as most metal lyrics, but I personally think that in the case of the style that they go for, it works, and fancier lyrics wouldn't give the same effect or allow the listener to follow the story that they are trying to tell. If you love black metal and are looking for something new and different, check this album out. It's not their best album, since their 2012 album Where the Corpses Sink Forever is undoubtedly their greatest masterpiece, but if you want some songs that have more or less some form of a traditional structure, then this is the album to start with. Listen to the tracks Blood Queen and Charles Francis Coughlin if you're interested in giving this album a spin. Number 3, Flesh Coffin by Lorna Shaw. Continuing with the theme of eeriness, we have Flesh Coffin by New Jersey based blackened deathcore outfit Lorna Shaw. Granted their sound may not be scary per se, but it does have ambience and atmosphere and I could totally imagine any of the tracks being used in any of the Garden of the Sinners movies if Anime Studios used metal in their soundtracks. Lorna Shaw, like Carnifex, use a lot more black metal influences to their sound as opposed to the usual death metal, metalcore and hardcore influences that deathcore is known for. There is a heavy focus on creating a haunting atmosphere accompanied by speedy and technical riffing, a variety of breakdowns and of course dark and monstrous vocals. I've been jamming to this album a lot this year and is definitely one of, if not the best deathcore releases of the year. There's always something new to discover when it comes to the instrumentation with each listen and the overall adrenaline these guys provide really gets the blood flowing and the heart pumping. This band definitely shows a lot of promise and is definitely one of the better names in a genre that hasn't really been open to much experimentation and innovation. The production is great, the songwriting is tight, and the overall tone of their sound is one that can definitely be expanded upon in many ways while still retaining the fundamental traits of the deathcore genre. Also the lyricism is probably the most dark and poetic you will find in the genre. So if you like your deathcore to be speedy with a bit of ambience and technicality, then this is the album for you. The best songs to check from this album are definitely Funeral Moon and the title track Flesh Coffin. Number 4, Berserker by Beast in Black. Do you like your metal having its stylistic roots in bands like Judas Priest mixed with some nostalgic 80s and 90s styled synths and power metal elements? And if you're a fan of anime by any chance, particularly of a certain dark fantasy written and illustrated by the legendary Kintaro Miura aka the Japanese George R. R. Martin, well then, good news. 
After being kicked out of his former band, Battle Beast, who also released an album earlier this year, funnily enough, the founding m- member of Battle Beast decided to start a new band, and this album completely blows his former band's latest offering out of the water. To be honest, Battle Beast's Brenner of Pain, released back in February, I believe, was a rather weak and disappointing release with only two or three memorable tracks, but this... This is Battle Beast's original founder, uncaged and untamed. The album is themed around the manga series Berserk, and it starts off on a very high and strong note, with a track that, while being the same name as the band itself, tells the story of Berserk's protagonist, Guts, aka the Black Swordsman. The song is just raw power personified, and the vocals are completely unhinged with no holds barred. The second track is a lot softer and more poppy, but it does contain some Nightwish elements and the vocalist shows off a completely different range to what he had in the opening track. And as each track progresses, the album only gets more epic in scale before ending on a slower and softer note. Berserker has to be one of, if not the best, power metal album that I have heard in a long time. And this album just goes to show you that you don't have to down-tune your guitars to the lowest possible note or have the most harsh and guttural of vocals to deliver the speed, power, and ferocity of the metal genre. This album is a definite must-listen, especially for metalheads who are looking for something a tad more old-school and, of course, for anime fans who love Berserk. The best tracks to get you started if you would like to get into this album would have to be the opening track, Beast in Black, Blind and Frozen, Blood of the Lion, Zod the Immortal, The Fifth Angel, and Go to Hell. Number 5, Urn by Neobla Viscaris. Are you a fan of Opeth, particularly their albums leading from Blackwater Park to Ghost Reveries where they still had their death metal elements before going full on prog rock? Well, this Australian bass band is definitely the successor to that sound. Sure, they definitely have a lot of their own characteristics that set them apart from Opeth's more jazzy sound, and let's not forget the incorporation of the violin as a key instrument to their songs. But this band has definitely started to make a name for themselves in recent years, and I believe this album is a great starting point to give someone new to the band a crash course as to what they can expect from them when delving into their entire discography. Everything about this album is just amazing. The production is spot on, the mixing is top notch, and allows every instrument to be clearly picked up, and the composition arrangements would make any classical composer, if they were still alive today, proud. The harsh vocals are good, the clean vocals are just awesome, and I adore the bass guitar and violin parts of the song the most. It is something that is best experienced than explained. All I can say is that this band deserves a lot more recognition, and they definitely are pushing boundaries when it comes to extreme prog metal. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few short years they will be on the same level of recognition as bands like Gojira, Opeth, and Meshuggah. All the tracks on this album are great, but if you want a taste of what this band has to offer, check out the track Intravenous. It's absolutely fantastic. Number 6. Paradoxica by Wide Eyes. This is an album that I discovered by total accident a few months back when browsing through a list of all the albums released this last year. Again, it was the album art that drew me in, but little did I know at the time that my mind was about to be completely blown away by this band. Wide Eyes is an instrumental progressive metal band with one of its members being involved in the Gen's progressive metal band Embrace who released their self-titled debut album back in 2015. Now that alone should give you an indication that this band's style of prog is heavily influenced by bands like Animals as Leaders and Periphery. However, Wide Eyes definitely incorporates a lot more traditional prog elements as well, especially in the keyboard arrangements, and the best part about this group is their ambient elements, which really enhances the experience and separates them from a lot of their peers and even their predecessors. While this isn't a long prog album and it has less than 10 tracks, the length of each track more than makes up for that. Each song is mixed and produced at the highest of quality and 
The brilliant composition and arrangement allows for every song to flow smoothly into one another as it transitions from track to track. Normally, I'm not one for instrumental only bands when it comes to metal, but this band really stands out and I highly recommend that fans of both prog and gents check them out. The best track for me on this album is definitely the title track. It has a very technical, groovy and energetic build up before ending on a strong, soaring high note. I cannot wait for their next release which is rumored to finally have some vocals probably but even if they stick to instrumentals only i'd still be more than happy i'm very happy that i discovered these guys and i know you will be too number seven blood of my enemy by winds of plague ah yes winds of plague the band that started the symphonic deathcore genre and made waves in the deathcore scene back in 2008 with their classic album decimate the week which was followed up with an epic and ambitious concept album that featured many prominent vocalists from the scene including the late mitch lucko of suicide silence after a period where they released two weaker albums that didn't meet expectations, the band went on a hiatus that had lasted since 2014 until now. This album is actually, if you had to ask me personally, their best work since their debut. Most fans of this band will disagree, but despite the fact that this is not their heaviest or most ambitious release, it has two things that the previous two albums didn't have. Focus and consistency. Gone are the random new metal inspired and hip hop inspired songs and gone are the majority of the cheesy tough guy lyrics. Instead this album focuses on delivering aggression and atmosphere in the riffs and keyboards despite Johnny's vocals not being as strong as they once were. While it is sad to see that Johnny's voice no longer has the power it once had, the instrumentation more than makes up for it. If I had to describe the sound that Winds of Plague have gone for on this record, it would have to be Hatebreed meets Dimo Borge. And it actually works and sounds fucking fantastic. The mixing and production is also decent. If I had to nitpick one thing, it would be the title track. It's a great song and I love the female vocals on this track, but I do think the style of vocal that the keyboardist delivers is very out of place, especially considering the fact that this is a symphonic style of metal. She does a vocal style that seems more like it belongs in a punk style genre than a symphonic metal genre. So while she can definitely sing, I just don't think that it blends with the style very well. Otherwise, this is a fantastic album and I do recommend that old school Winds of Plague fans give it another chance and that those new to the band give this album a listen. My favorite tracks have to be Kings of Carnage, Blood of My Enemy and Not Alone. Number 8. Ron One to Fuck With by Dying Fetus. This was a great year for death metal, but sadly only one death metal album could make it to the list considering the number of them and how many of them really stuck with me throughout the year. I was torn between this album, the latest Cannibal Corpse album, Red Before Black, and September's Codex Omega by Septic Flesh. But in the end, this was the album that for me contained the most surprises, technicality and finesse out of everything that was put out this year. Dying Pieces have been around for quite some time and while they've had many ups and downs, this is definitely one of their best works. What I love about their style in comparison to other death metal bands is not just the technicality of the instrumentation, but the overall groove this band has when they write their riffs. Like, holy crap, every riff would just stay stuck in my head for hours and sometimes days at a time. This album also just gets better and better with each listen. I'm forever noticing something new and picking up on things that I maybe wasn't paying attention to on the previous listen. The songwriting is tight. The production still retains that old school death metal style while being high quality enough to be a modern metal record. The vocals might not be for everyone since this band is probably the one that started the Cookie Monster vocals meme, but it's a fantastic record nonetheless. My favorite tracks have to be Fixated on Devastation and the title track Wrong One to Fuck With. Number 9, Atrocities from Beyond by Analepsy. What would this list be without a slam album? I would have put Dehumanizing Eta Train Worship's debut EP on this list, but unfortunately that EP was released on December 31st, 2016. 
So, while we saw many great slam releases, Analepsy's first full-length album, Atrocities from Beyond, is brutality at its finest. The instrumentation has the same amount of technicality and groove that Velvedinia have, and the vocals, while they don't have a lot of range, are still great for this genre. The production and mixing is a lot clearer than most slam albums, and I love how each slam and breakdown has this powerful blast of raw bass that really adds emphasis to the heaviness of this record. I also love how, unlike most slam records, there are actually guitar solos on a lot of the songs. Granted, most of them are short-lived, but damn are they memorable and good. I also love how some aspects of the mixing include a sound similar to that of Dying Fetus when it comes to the guitars. There are a few slower instrumental tracks as well, which are a nice welcome break amidst the chaos and ferocity of the other tracks, and they definitely don't feel out of place as they still retain the brutality of the other tracks, but with a slightly more melodic overtone in the lead guitar parts. There are a few guest vocalists on here, but I don't recognize any of them as this band is from Portugal and I'm not that familiar with any Portuguese metal bands. At least I don't think I am. Anyways, this is a fantastic slam album and if you haven't heard of this band and you're into the genre, then I highly recommend it as these guys definitely show a lot of potential to be a big name in the scene if they carry on the way that they are. My favorite tracks of this record would have to be Rifts to Abhorrence, Witnesses of Extinction, and Ferocious Aftermath. Number 10, Gunmen by Auden Ogan. And finally, we have Gunmen by Auden Ogan. I was actually introduced to this band through Galactic Criminals channel since he did a few reactions to them in anticipation of this album and is apparently a huge fan of theirs. Now, I haven't checked out the rest of their discography with the exception of the music videos they have available on YouTube, but this album for me seems like their real breakthrough album. The album has many great, grand, and soaring melodies and choruses that anyone can sing along to, which is something all great power metal albums must have. While the intro track isn't as epic as the rest of the album, it really does kick off and doesn't stop from the second track till the end. Another thing I liked about this record is the vocals. The vocalist of this band doesn't have a typical power metal voice and it would actually lend itself well to a variety of styles of metal utilized in the correct manner. So don't expect your typical ultra high power metal notes and Rob Halford, Bruce Dickinson influences in the vocals. There's not much else to say about this album other than it's probably the best power metal album I've listened to since Wisdom's Marching for Liberty. And for my list, that's a hard thing to topple. So if you love the epic sensations of power metal, then check this album out. My favorite tracks are definitely Fields of Sorrow, Come With Me to the Other Side featuring the one and only Liv Christine, and The Face of Silence. Now, I can't end off this list without putting some honorable mentions. These are the albums that I also considered having on the list and have definitely been enjoying a lot during the course of this year. So be sure to check these albums out if you haven't already done so. Yeah, it's not there. Last time, last time, you're dead. It's not as well. 
And that concludes this list of what I believe to be the best metal albums of 2017. What were some of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see more videos like this one, then you can head over to my Patreon where you will have access to a special poll where you can vote for what anime or band discography that you would like me to review. And if you want to stay up to date with what is going on with the channel, then be sure to follow me on all my social media accounts which are linked in the description box below. Also be sure to check out the video that I made on Carnifex if you want some more metal related content. And if you want to check out my anime content, then you can be sure to check out my video on my picks for the top 10 anime of 2017 if you're looking for some new shows to watch. Thanks for watching, so until the next video, take care of yourselves, and as always, have a kick-ass day.